So welcome to podcast in, in E-Class. Uh, I'm this webinar's facilitator, Nick Middlebrook. I'm the Instructional Technology Specialist here at the Office of Online Learning at Mount St. Mary College. And we're going to jump right in. Um, a lot of fun things to show you today. Um, let's get through the basics first. So what is a podcast? Well, quite simply, a, a podcast is a series of digital files, either audio or video. Um, that are released sequentially in episodes through some kind of syndication, much like a TV show would be syndicated. Um, the beauty of a podcast is that they're usually downloaded automatically to a user's device when a new episode is posted. So you'll know that a new episode has shown up um, or it'll just automatically download for you. You don't have to go out and remember to search for a new episode or anything like that. Podcasts consist of um, a couple of key elements, although they can be very wildly in terms of um, other aspects like their content. Uh, first and foremost, they're digital audio or sometimes video that is available in an episodic format. They are easily downloadable and can be stored for offline play. Um, so it's not just streaming audio, but it's audio that's actually a file that can be downloaded and played again. Um, very often are topic or theme driven. For example, a podcast about geology or biology or chemistry, maybe news or research. Um, there's podcasts out there for everything from cooking to stories about you know, American history. Um, but they're very much focused on a specific theme. And they have to be convenient. Um, I mentioned before, they, they generally are updated ver via an automated feed with computer software. And these days, any platform out there from Windows to Linux to iOS or Android has many different apps that can download and um, access podcasts um, that are out there. The most popular ones out there right now, if you have an iPhone um, or Mac, is usually iTunes. And for those of you that use Android, uh, Stitcher is a big one out there as well. Uh, but they all read from the same sort of space, from the same database. So why podcasts? You know, what's the point of doing more work <laughs> as a teacher? Um, well, students, you know, in this day and age are already listening to podcasts. They've become very popular in the last few years, um, sort of exploded, I would say, you know, uh, this sort of on-demand radio, if you will. Um, but they also have this educational side to them. So why, why podcast? Well, students can use podcasts to learn new concepts prior to class, the old flip, flipped classroom model. Um, so essentially, you could give them, you know, a podcast that either you created or you, maybe you recommended on a subject, and, you know, that's their homework. And then the class time is a discussion of what they listen to. It allows them to, students to review lecture information before taking a test. You know, traditionally, if, if a professor were to give me a lecture in class, that moment, the, the only moments I'm seeing in that lecture are when I'm sitting right there in front of that teacher, and inevitably some things are going to be lost. Uh, there's some things are going to be lost. I'm just laughing at your comment, Bob. Um, in translation, you know, you can't take perfect notes, you know, unless you know shorthand or something. So it allows you a chance to kind of look back over material. Um, also, it lets you control the pace of the instruction. Um, you can stop, you can start, you can make bookmarks in many different um, podcast programs. And it basically allows you to go over concepts that, you know, might have been unclear the first time through. And um, lastly, it allows you to engage in course materials that maybe augment classroom instruction or present information in a different way. And we'll go over a couple of those throughout this short presentation here. In terms of what you need technology-wise, um, it's pretty simple to get started with podcasting. Um, you need a computer, a smartphone, or a tablet, um, obviously. You definitely need a microphone. Um, you know, most anything these days comes with a microphone uh, from your laptop to your uh, smartphones, which are basically just big microphones. Um, and although if you have a desktop computer, those of you that still have one of those, um, you might need an external microphone. Um, and as you go through you know, your podcasting journey, you're going to want to upgrade your microphone eventually anyway um, to something a little more you know, higher quality. You know, my laptop's microphone doesn't really sound all that great, where you know, my uh, the microphone I'm using right now is obviously of a higher quality. Hopefully it makes me sound not so far away and echoey. So. And you need some sound recording software. And we're going to go through a couple examples of different software you can use today. 
Um, it is worth noting um, that all platforms these days, Windows and Mac, have built-in sound recorders, as do smartphones. E-Class also has a built-in audio recorder, which we'll, we'll touch on briefly. Um, and then there's a lot of websites out there as well that basically allow you to record, record audio directly into the website. Um, so you don't even need to deal with software if you don't want to. So we're going to go through a few of the methods used to record and upload podcasts. Um, the first few recording methods we have, um, and we'll go through these um, step by step in a moment, is recording directly to E-Class. Let me get out of my whoops. Let me get out of my presentation and show you what I mean. Just move some windows around briefly. Okay, so you can actually record audio directly into E-Class if you wish to do so. Um, and this could be done to, say, maybe create a podcast. I've created a short, a small little um, podcasting demo course here um, that we'll be using today to sort of demonstrate some of our ideas. And so, for instance, I've created a form called the podcast, excuse me, class podcast. And um, we'll go through some of these topics uh, later on. But say I wanted to start a new podcast in this form. Very simply, I would click Add a New Discussion Topic. And this is just a standard form that you know, the kind you use anytime you uh, have a form in E-Class. I'll call this New Podcast. And my topic here, my message, listen to my new podcast. And then what I do from here is I insert media. And I'll release a short guide on how to do any of this if anyone needs this information again in the future. It brings you to the file picker screen you may be familiar with. I click on record audio, audio. And you can make it recording right here. Now you notice it's saying loading. That's because the computer I'm currently on is already using my microphone for this presentation. So it's not going to let me record while I'm recording somewhere else. Um, but you can kind of see there's a record, play, and a stop button. You can just record and then directly upload your audio right to E-Class. Um, and you would have a little audio player there. Um, if you were at the using audio in E-Class presentation, uh, we had at one point, um, you saw me do that live. And that's also on YouTube. Another way you can do it, uh, adding a podcast, is say you record a file from an outside source. And we'll go over that briefly in a few minutes. So say I recorded a file from an outside source. I've saved it somewhere. And what I want to do from here is I can just add that file. Once I find it. E-Class is uploading it currently. You can insert the file. You can see Lecture 3 has been inserted. I can post it to my form. And now I have my new thread, new podcast. And if I click on it, the audio player loads right here. And I can listen to my, my new podcast here that I recorded and uploaded. And then your students also could, of course, reply to this or post your own responses in audio. That's the easiest way. That's the built-in way using E-Class's built-in sound recorder, which is always available um, any place you can add media in E-Class. Um, you can also use a, another piece of outside software, a third-party software called Audacity, uh, which we use for most of our recordings here um, at the Office of Online Learning. And Audacity is a free program. It's on Mac and PC. And what it allows you to do is record audio very quickly, very easily, and export it to a multitude of file formats that are out there. Um, for instance, right now, I'll see what happens if I hit record. Yeah, it's not going to record anything because it can't record from 
yeah, it's not going to record anything right now because I'm also using the microphone. Um, but for instance, I could use this to record a lecture um, and also use it to edit that lecture as well. Um, you'll see in a moment um, a lecture that I recorded or a test lecture once it opens in a moment. And you'll see the waveform or sort of the visualization of the sound file pop up in front of us. And so were I to be recording and maybe I make a mistake or I have to cough or a loud fire truck goes by, which happens here when I'm recording things all the time, um, you would be able to edit the audio file if it decides to load in Audacity for me. It's being temperamental today. There it goes. And now I have this audio file here and say I didn't, you know, I, I messed up right here. I could just simply select what I don't need, erase it, and I can edit my audio file very easily, save it, and export it as an MP3 or another standard file format. I um, highly recommended it to use this program um, if you, you know, are looking to record longer files where editing is going to be inevitable for some reason. So that's Audacity, very useful. And again, if you ever are looking to use any of these um, tools, you know, our office is more than happy to uh, sort of walk you through the basics of how to use them um, effectively and appropriately. Another option we have um, is a website called SoundCloud. And it actually has some benefits. Although it's a third-party site, there are some benefits to using SoundCloud. Um, so for instance, I have a little test account here on SoundCloud where I've uploaded some recordings that I've made over time. And I have this nice little interface here for me to listen to them, uh, play them through, and uh, even bring them into full screen. Um, these sorts of recordings, use my phone in the background, these sorts of recordings can also have comments that are left on them um, for various reasons, if you want to have comments or not. Um, but the nice thing is, is that they can full, be fully embedded into either a form or a class. Or an RSS feed um, is uh, something that is built into SoundCloud and other audio hosting platforms. And essentially what it lets you do, um, that's the feed or the sort of the website address that your podcast player will connect to. Um, and it will check periodically to see if there's new episodes um, of that podcast available from time to time and usually will notify you or just automatically download it if you set to set it to do so. And um, if you have a public RSS feed, you can actually request that it be hosted on the iTunes podcast directory. Um, and for those of you that use iTunes, um, it's this huge, huge directory of pretty much most of the podcasts out there, um, all the fun stuff that you can listen to and learn about. Um, and so just by having a public RSS po podcast feed, you know, if you, you can get your show hosted um, publicly if you want to, but that's, of course, optional. You can have a private RSS feed as well. Um, and this is something that's built into SoundCloud. So say this was my podcast feed here, these files here, and I wanted, you know, you wanted to be able to sort of subscribe to the show I was doing. Um, very simply, what I would do um, I would give you the feed to my, that's not the right one, there we go, my RSS feed, which is this link right here. Um, and that is a link that will always sort of update um, your podcast application with whatever I post here on my SoundCloud account. And there's other free websites that and accounts that can do this kind of stuff, but um, SoundCloud is you know one of the easiest ones to you, use. Um, and I can even, you know, set all sorts of different options and whatnot. Okay, so getting back to where we left off. Um, another, so that's one way of podcasting using that software. Another way you can podcast, and I mentioned it briefly before, is to use the uh, forum um, module on eClass here. And what you would do is you would just simply create a form, and then um, link to your podcast um, and then your students could have a discussion about that podcast. Um, your students could also create a podcast as well and then you could discuss the podcast with them. You know, it doesn't have to be just you. Um, however, there's other ways uh, you can embed it. For instance, if I wanted to use SoundCloud but still have the forum discussion, 
I don't have to use SoundCloud to have the discussion. I can upload to SoundCloud, get the embed code from SoundCloud, and then embed my um, presentation right here in the form. And everyone would see this nice sort of player view here. And then they would be able to listen to the podcast and then in reply um, with any sort of this discussion or comments they might have for you. Um, that's the easiest way of doing it pretty much within E-Class without having to use any outside software. Um, but you have sort of many different options and it uh, kind of is de dependent on what you want to do really as a teacher. You can also just directly upload the files yourself. If you don't need to have a discussion for any reason, you can just take the files here, lecture, you know, any of your lectures, and bring them directly, on, bring them directly into eClass just by simply dragging them, dragging and dropping them into a um, topic. And you'll see lecture six is uploading sort of a large file right there. Um, and when it's done uploading in a moment, it'll be listed just then right there on the eClass page. And if a student were to click on one of these lectures, they would be brought to a page where they could um, listen to it, or they could also have the option of just downloading the file for um, future use. Especially a nice thing if you're on a smartphone and you don't want to be streaming, you know, using up your data limit. And there you can see lecture six has now been uploaded to um, our course here. Uh, a few more things just to briefly go through before we finish up for today. Sorry about that. Um, there's a variety of lesson ideas out there um, utilizing podcasts. I know we're just sort of touching on the subject today. Um, but such ideas such as a weekly digest, um, something short, you know, you don't have to reinvent the wheel or give full lectures. It could just be a, a, a recap of what you did that week um, or what you expect for next week. Again, I mentioned uh, earlier student podcasts where your students are doing the podcasting, maybe setting up in small groups and they have to do, you know, two episodes throughout the course of the class or something like that. It could be very interesting to see what they come up with. Um, you could have short podcasts to in increase engagement, little blurbs like this week in history or something about a famous, you know, philosopher or, you know, recap of interesting research done this week at the college. Um, it doesn't even need to be just for a class. I mean, com committees and, and organizations within the college could certainly use podcasts as well. Of course, the more traditional way is to do a full lecture series. Um, that's where you know, you're recording a full series of lectures at a time uh, to sort of be used as a course material, very useful in a flipped classroom setting, um, or for, of course a purely online setting as well. And that might be where something uh, along the lines of a video podcast would be sort of more in line with what you're looking for, um, either, either utilizing our built-in sort of video and audio recording uh, software on eClass called WizIQ, um, it's like a virtual classroom, or by using something like Adobe Connect or VoiceThread. Um, you could record a live class to just keep it for future reference or if there's an interesting discussion taking place that day. All you need to do is put your cell phone on record in the corner of the classroom um, for the most you know, rudimentary way of doing so and then upload that file later as a podcast and then any uh, student could listen to sort of the lectures as you recorded them but you're not recording them twice. It's sort of a you know you, you get what you get kind of thing. Um, but it could be very useful for some students. And you know in the end of the day, uh, just hearing somebody's voice is really helpful for increasing a sense of sort of class community, especially if it's an online class. Um, if you've ever taught or taken an online class, you know very well that you know it's you don't have a voice, you don't have a face for a lot of those students or teachers, and it's kind of it's very almost impersonal. Um, so it's a way to sort of impart some personality, uh, both you know to your class and to your teaching, um, and sort of make your students feel a little more engaged in a classroom community, um, specifically for those online and hybrid classes. So a few closing thoughts. Um, podcasts most definitely encourage uh, multiple modes of thinking and engaging with course material. There's all sorts of different ways you can use them, um, from the flipped classroom, like I've mentioned, to you know having students do things instead. Gives you all sorts of new types of assignments and um, enrichment of lessons 
they're reusable, uh, specifically if you don't focus on a specific time, you know, the moment, if you will, um, and they're very easily editable. So, if, you know, if something changes in the future, you need to add on to one or subtract from one, you can do so um, and not lose the original file. They're very, you know, you're just working with small audio files here. So they're very versatile in that respect. And they allow for more personalized learning, and they're very good for enhancing your online courses, um, as I mentioned moments before. before. So that's the end of this very brief um, technical issue prone <laughs> Moodle Bytes seminar. Um, I do have a very short guide to uh, sort of some podcasting tips, I think 10 or 15 or so podcasting tips. You know, if you want to get started um, doing this or, you know, maybe even do a few test runs. Um, if you haven't podcasted before, you know, there's a couple little things you just want to know going into it. And um, if you, I will also attach to anyone that attended today a copy of the audio, using audio resources in eClass, uh, which touched on podcasting briefly, but sort of includes all the ways to upload and get audio into your class, um, at least using the built-in eClass methods. Um, so for future, you know, if any of you are ever interested in doing this, um, if you want to know more about it, if you want to stop in the office for just a quick demo, uh, always happy to accommodate that. And I thank you all for coming today. If there's no questions. Alrighty. All right. Well, thank you everyone for coming and I will see you at the next webinar.